Hey AP Chemsters, this is Mrs. Vandewoy to continue on another version of Blank Wall series here. We uh, continue on into section 11.4, the vapor pressures of solutions. If we recall back what our definition of solution is, a solution is consisting of the solute and the solvent, and it's very important to keep the two separated. Uh, the solute is what's being dissolved, the solvent is what's doing the dissolving. Typically the solvent is going to be water, and in most cases we'll use that. So this section 11.4 is the vapor pressure of solutions and once again vapor pressure is the pressure produced by the the molecules from the liquid phase entering into the gas phase. So here the first of all we're going to talk about what if our solution is made up of non-volatile solutes. Uh, solutes that don't evaporate easily. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about ionic species. We're talking about maybe like some sugars or, or things like that. Things that do not become a gas easily. So if I look at this picture here, we have a non-volatile solute added into the right-hand beaker. So if I were to analyze these beakers carefully, the left-hand beaker has a pure solvent and I see six molecules in the gas phase. Its vapor pressure is three if you look at the barometer up here. On the right-hand beaker, we've added something. We've added those yellow molecules. Those are our non-volatile solutes. And if you look, a couple things. We have only four molecules in the gas phase uh, above this beaker. And notice right here, the barometer is down to two. The pressure went down because I fear molecules colliding against you know, the walls and whatnot, so I have a lower vapor pressure. So what does this tell me that these non-volatile electrolytes lower the vapor pressure of the solute? Well, first of all, the, the non-volatile molecules, the salt, the sugars, do not enter the vapor pressure. If you remember, it takes thousands of degrees to boil a, uh, an ionic substance. The, the, the salt will not be in the gas phase. So the only thing that can be is the solvent. Um, and notice that by adding the solute into the right-hand beaker, there are fewer molecules that are available to enter the vapor stage. So there was a French guy named Francis Marie Raoul. He, oh, here's a picture of him. I guess it's Francois. Sorry, guy. And anyway, he was the one that came up with this relationship. <coughs> excuse me, between the uh, pressure of the solvent and the pressure of the solution. And here's the equation where pressure of the solution is equal to, and this is a chi. If you remember back in section 11.1, chi meant mole fraction. Uh, the mole fraction of the solvent times the pressure of the solvent. And if you notice this, we can uh, graph these relationships where P of the solution, the, the vapor pressure of the solution right here can be the Y equals MX. My um, M actually is the pressure of pure solvent, and my X is this mole fraction of the solvent. And molar mass of the solute can be calculated from experimental results if you remember what the chi is. Chi is the moles, in this case, of the solute over, I'm sorry, moles of the solvent over the total number of moles. Moles of solvent plus solute. So here, I'll write that down. So if you know the moles of the solute, you can probably calculate the molar mass if you know how many grams you started out with. All right, this is not it. I'll get back to you.